three or four weeks ago, I reviewed this, the Xiaomi Redmi Note 8 Pro. I happen to like it, it is a very good phone, but we've got the cheaper version that's been in the studio for a week now. This is the Redmi Note 8 that I've been testing and using. It has the Snapdragon 665, so not using MediaTek. Now, there was a lot of MediaTek hate in the review of the Redmi Note 8 Pro. A lot of people just don't want to touch MediaTek, and I can completely understand why. When you look at their previous gen chips, they were never really that good compared to their Qualcomm counterparts. Now, there are still some things that remain, like the efficiency of the chips. You'll notice that Qualcomm is going to be better. Now, is there a huge difference between both of these phones? I will do some comparisons, just small ones in this particular video here, but it is, after all, my review of the Redmi Note 8. So let's check this one out in depth, in detail, and see if it's a worthy phone and is it worth the money to go for the Pro or should you actually get the Qualcomm Mobile instead? So the Redmi Note 8 here, this is a loan unit that was provided to me from TradingShenzhen.com and we've got a TPU case in the box, which is good that manufacturers are pretty much always now including cases straight out of the box for their phones. They do realize that they're covered with glass, they're slippery, so we've got decent protection there. So we have an 18 watt charger. It will fully charge the phone in one hour and 52 minutes. Type-C cable and instruction leaflet SIM tool. Let's first take a look at the build of the phone. So we have apparently Gorilla Glass 5 front and back, and I like this effect we have. You can see that a wave effect on the glass and it does have 2.5D edges, so it doesn't feel sharp in hand or anything like that. Redmi branding, and I love the way that it shifts from this purple at the bottom into a bluish, almost green look there, is quite unique. Now the cameras here, we've got four of them. So we have an ultra wide, which is eight megapixels at the very top. Below that is the 48 megapixel sensor. It doesn't have any optical image stabilization. And then we have two two megapixel sensors. So one is just for macro shots, so very low resolution, and then we have the other one just for depth information for your portrait photos. There is a dual tone LED flash, and you can see the rear capacitive always on fingerprint reader. So this phone is 8.6 millimeters thick. With the camera bulge, it is then 10.4 millimeters. So we've got an IR transmitter there on the top and the secondary mic. And then along the bottom here, single loudspeaker, so no dual loudspeakers here, Type-C port, and what looks like dual microphones, I believe is just one microphone, but it's got two holes there, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So the bezels are not the slimmest. They've taken the advantage of the chin size here to put the actual Redmi branding in here with a blue accent around it and on the sides there. I do actually like this look. It's a little bit different from what you typically see and so many phones now, they just all look like clones of each other. So this separates it out and makes it look just a little different. Water drop notch that houses our 13 megapixel camera with an f2.0 aperture. Just above it's an earpiece. Now this earpiece outputs normal kind of quality and I don't have any complaints with cool quality with this phone. It sounds fine to me. Top left side of the phone, you'll find our SIM trace. So it's metal reinforced. It does have a gasket around it, and this is really good. We've got a micro SD card slot there, but it will also take at the same time two nano SIMs. So no more having to give up one of those SIM cards. You can run both and the micro SD all at the same time. Now the phone does have a status LED that's in the top left of the top bezel. And you'll see that when I plug it in, It'll come on, just a tiny little light there, and it goes off once you have fully charged in one hour and 51 minutes approximately. That then just leaves our buttons, which are on the right-hand side. They're very easy to access, and they don't rattle. Overall, the build quality is good. It's a solid, well-put-together phone. Now, this is to be expected, of course, because the Redmi Note 8 Pro is a more expensive phone, but to me, it has a superior screen on it. And it's not just the brightness, it's also the color reproduction that you get with it. So maximum brightness on the Redmi Note 8 Pro is 490 lux approximately versus the about 360 we're getting on the Redmi Note 8. So it is a much duller screen. And when you take a look at the overall build quality, I like the way they've done things here with the Redmi Note 8 Pro, having the camera centered, I think just looks a little bit better. But not only that, it's got the curved rear glass as well, which in hand just makes the phone feel a little better to hold. The screen gamma on the Note 8 comes out to be around about 1.8 here to almost 2. Ideally it should be 2.2, but most mobile phones will not have this spot on, especially out of the box calibration. So this is not actually a bad screen, don't get me wrong, for an IPS panel in this category of phone, it's quite good because I'm not seeing the shadowing issues on the corners. 
around the water drop notch that you used to see, especially the first phones from Xiaomi to have IPS panels with that water drop notch. It's not really that bad, but you do notice the difference between the Pro version, and that is, of course, understandable. Now, ROM performance is something that I'm not happy at all with because it's just not well optimized. You see a lot of full screen gesture lag and stutters. When you multitask, sometimes, for example, you bring up Play Store and you just see that things can be a little bit choppy at times. Now, where I've noticed it the most is when the phone hasn't been used for, say, one hour. It's in a deep sleep. You wake it up, you unlock it, and then you go to swipe up to home to apps. And you can even see then some of the animations, it's just not there. It should be much, much more fluid than what it is. It's not the chipset's fault. Clearly, it is the ROM. Now, notifications. They should be showing at the top here, but they are not. We've got that same issue yet again that is back. I think it was fixed with some of the beta ROMs. So if I go to install, for example, Asphalt 9 here, okay, you'll see then that it's gonna show at the top. There's all my notifications. They're back again. Now, just swipe up here, okay? That wasn't too bad then with the animations. All right, so let's run through a couple of things. So when you first get the phone, you're gonna have a little bit of bloatware and that's not that great, but most of it you can actually remove. So I've got, of course, the 128 gigabyte version here and you get 110 gigabytes free and of course you can use micro SD. So that is great there. Uh, I'm on the latest firmware, by the way, at the time of this video. So no widevine level one suit, unfortunately. So that translates into Netflix, Amazon Prime Video and other streaming services all stuck in standard definition. Hopefully a firmware update will fix this. Now this is really good. Camera API to support is level three, the maximum. So Google camera ports will be working. I think there are ports out for this one already. And here we've got GPS. So it works just like any other Qualcomm phone. You're gonna get accuracy of around three to four meters and, and no real issues to report. It was very quick to get lock. Internal storage is not the fastest as you can see, but it's not gonna bottleneck the system here. It's still random reads and writes. They're actually pretty good for this price range of phone. Here's our Antutu score. So now this is the Antutu version eight now. Google Play Store is only serving us this version here. So scores are a little different and off. And wireless, okay, wireless performance isn't amazing, but again, for what it is, this phone, for its price, it's, it's actually okay. You can go over to the other side of the apartment here, the studio, and I'm still getting over the 100 megabits per second I like to see. Oh, that's just gaming, Call of Duty, one another round. Uh, that shouldn't be in here. Okay. Most importantly, battery life, very good, okay? Screen is always gonna be your biggest hardware consumer, of course. Screen on time, it's a little hard to make out there, but eight hours, so very good. Uh, you can probably squeeze this out to nine. This was over the space of just one day of quite heavy use. You can see I was gaming a lot, Call of Duty. I'm kind of addicted to the game, and that is why I wouldn't call this your normal kind of use. It's very heavy, but you can see there is a bit of a wake lock issue. So it keeps waking up here. This was during the night, so I left it when I went to sleep to see how much I would uh, lose in terms of battery life. And there was a bit of standby drain issue. I lost, it was 8% overnight, and most phones would be about half of that, or maybe 5%. So there's something going on within the ROM that's causing it to not go into a deep sleep. Now audio is something that is actually quite good here on this Xiaomi, the 3.5 millimeter output. I've got really no complaints with. It sounds great to me, no problems. And we do have just a single loudspeaker. You kind of expect that for what this phone is, the price of it. So here's a sample now of that loudspeaker just with some audio and a little bit of voice and some music. And it does sound good to me. It's lacking a little bit in bass and mids as expected, but your ringtones do come through very loud for receiving calls. Call quality sounds good, as mentioned with the earpiece that no problems. QC4 spec, then it would be one hour. We get a 3.5 to Type-C adapter. So for gaming performance, this is Call of Duty. Now I've set it onto the max frame rate, which should be, I believe, 60 frames per second or 45. I think it's 60 here on high. Now very high does get a little bit more stutters and lag, so I wouldn't recommend it. Just high is gonna run actually fine. I've been able to win complete rounds here with Battle Royale, but let's take a look at the performance. So the performance overall is good. You're able to get kills, run around just fine. You will see the occasional little frame dip now and then that it does trigger some lag on the high settings because the graphics after all, I mean, look at it, very visually demanding. So you're just moving around there. It's a little choppy, and especially when you zoom in, 
But overall, I think the high setting is probably the setting to go for if you want the good visuals. But of course, if you want the improved frame rate, then lower things down. Let's take a look now at a more demanding game, and that is Shadowgun Legends, which can really choke on some mobiles. So Shadowgun Legends, I've noticed that it's running on high 60 frames per second reasonably well, but you will see some noticeable just frame dips and stutter like right now. You can probably see it with all these enemies here shooting at me. It's a little choppy, so I would lower the setting down on this game to medium. And for those asking about PUBG, that PUBG is going to run fine on this, but just keep it on lower settings. Don't force it onto the high settings. So overall gaming performance for the type of mobile and the phone it is, is to be expected. It's not the best, but you can still play all those new demanding games out there, and that's the main thing. Now onto the face unlocking and fingerprint reader. So look at it, tap, and you can see it was a little slow just then. Do it one more time. There we go. Okay, so it normally takes about a second it's not as fast as the Redmi Note 8 Pro I've noticed right there. Same goes for the fingerprint reader. So I will tap it now. You can see that was a good second. Okay, a little bit faster then. One more time. All right, it's not too bad. It's just not the fastest I have seen from Xiaomi. A brief look now at our camera app. So it's pretty straightforward Xiaomi here. If you want the macro sensor, then you tap this right here. And if you want the ultra wide, you tap this little button there. So that brings out the ultra wide. And if you want two times digital, that's straightforward, 48 megapixel mode and night shot mode. So I'm going to quickly compare here the Redmi Note 8 Pro to the Note 8 because I know a lot of people are going to ask this. Now this is just a low light comparison. Daylight, they're pretty much the same, really not a huge difference. I'd have to say that I think daylight photos are actually better on the Note 8 Pro. But low light, you can see they're trading blows here for selfie shots in lower light conditions. The Redmi Note 8 Pro is going to get the win. But you can see here, Redmi Note 8 Pro with the rear camera does have a lot of noise in this photo. So they're kind of trading blows in low light. Both of them have terrible night shot photography, I think. I don't think they're that good compared to other brands out there. But hey, find yourself a working Google Cam port if you want improved low light photography. So here are some samples now shot on the Note 8 video stills and a few more low light samples. So this is a sample with the rear camera here. So we get 4K 30 frames per second, maximum no 4K 60. And unfortunately we do not have any electronic image stabilization with 4K, only with 1080p and 720p footage, which is unfortunate. I'm seeing a lot of this with Xiaomi phones. They just don't seem to want to enable it. I mean, it is enabled in the settings. The other thing too, the audio quality, it's okay, but the bit rate could certainly be a little bit better and possibly maybe better microphones because their competitors like Realme are definitely pushing forward with better audio quality than this. So the focus, that's working okay. Now with front facing video, it's just 1080p maximum here. And again, no electronic image stabilization, which hopefully with a firmware update, Xiaomi will add. All right guys, so you saw from the camera performance there when I did that little short comparison, just with low light, because that's where things get a little bit more tricky. They kind of trade blows. There's a lot more noise I noticed in some of the Redmi Note 8 Pro shots. But then when you take a look at the Redmi Note 8, 
it wasn't quite as good or as detailed with selfies, at least in low light. Now, so they are kind of similar. We've got 48 megapixels, 64. 64 more megapixels doesn't actually always mean it's better. In my experience with the phones I've used now, with the IMX 586, which is the 48 megapixel sensor, sensor I find it's actually better. Well, it's normally better when it has optical image stabilization enabled with it as well, but this phone doesn't have it. Neither of these do here. So we get the typical Xiaomi problems, and that is no wide fine level cert one. So Netflix in standard definition with the Redmi Note 8, also with this one too. But let's focus more on the, of course, Note 8. After all, it's the review of this phone that I'm talking about. So the battery life, I think it's pretty good, but the ROM performance is definitely a little bit stuttery and laggy. Now, this is probably the worst I've seen MIUI 10 running in some time, and it's not the chipset that's to blame, it's just Xiaomi. So there'll be some firmware updates, I'm sure, and the work's coming that will probably correct this. Now, the electronic image stabilization, missing on the front-facing camera, missing in 4K, it's there for 1080p, but why can they not enable it, I don't know. The audio quality is a little bit scratchy in video, and we're not seeing notifications, at least in the current state of this phone, with the icons at the top. Sometimes they show, other times they don't, as I showed you through the settings of the ROM that it is enabled. But it's just the performance that's really letting it down, the optimization that Xiaomi needs to figure out. I rule it's got a nice screen, but if we're talking about comparing both of these, the extra you have to pay for the Redmi Note 8 Pro, I believe is well worth it because the performance is just day and night here. This one is so much smoother. Its current software state, that is, the firmware that's on there, is just running so much better. You also have a more potent chipset. And for the Indians out there ranting on about uh, overheating issues, both of them do get warm gaming. This one gets a little warmer, but as I pointed out with my mini videos on the Redmi Note 8 Pro, so check the channel for that too as well, that is really not actually an issue. So for me, it's a no-brainer. If you've got the cash, get the Pro version over just the normal Note 8 because it is far superior in almost every single way there. And wait for the Google camera ports to improve that terrible low light photography. The night mode that you get on both of these is quite poor really when you compare it to other manufacturers. Even in this segment, Realme, they are doing low light photography a lot better. They're also doing video audio much better. So there's good competition going on. Xiaomi needs to step up their game in terms of software, correct the bugs, improve their performance. Thank you so much for watching this review. Remember, I do have a review of this one, so check it out in the channel. And if you are new here and you like this detailed, lengthy review, then subscribe to the channel, enable notifications, and I'll see you back in the channel with the next video.